Join us on our journey of speed, style, and innovation. On this season of Speed, Style, and Innovation, we're going to entertain, inspire, and educate you. Welcome to Speed, Style, and Innovation. My name's Buck, and this is... I'm George. George, what do you got for How's us today? How's it going, man? Good to see you. I tell you what, today yeah. I brought you two Cadillacs. Cadillac's been around for over 100 years, and at one time they were the second largest manufacturer in the United States. And so you've got two of them here today. I got two of them. What here year today. are we talking about? Today we're talking about a 1965 Cadillac sitting behind you, and right behind me is a 1959 Cadillac, one of the longest cars ever made. 59? 59. You're kidding me. Awesome. Let's go take a Let's look at this Let's go take a thing. look. Come, Come on. on. You know a lot about this car, don't you? 1959 Cadillac? This car epitomizes speed, style, and innovation really? in a number of ways. Absolutely. These dagger sharp tail fins, the jet style red tail lights, mm -hmm. and take a look at this aspect down here under the trunk. It, it looks like it's coming towards me, you know, not going away. I mean, you know, if you're driving down the road and you come up on this thing, all of a sudden, you know, I don't know if I'm coming forward or backwards. Caddy Jim. Oh my God. How did you get the name Caddy Jim? Well, obviously, uh, when I bought the 1959 Cadillac, uh, I saw it up in New Smyrna. I followed this car for like 10 years. 10 years, I heard. About 10 years before wow. I bought it. Uh, and I've owned it for about six years and it just kind of came with the territory. Well, what all have you done to the vehicle since you got it? Well, since I purchased it six years ago, we've kind of taken it to the next level. Uh, the gentleman I bought it from had an air ride suspe uh, suspension set up on it, but we've uh, wet sanded the vehicle. It's got like 80 hours of wet sanding and polishing and buffing in, in the paint alone. Uh, we redid the entire suspension and put air ride technologies, uh, air ride system in it so we can slam this on the ground. It actually sits down on the frame. We're going to introduce you to several new breeds of car builders and enthusiasts, including the Rat Rod Revolution. Well, George, I got to tell you, you've been telling me about this vehicle for how long? and I never had an interest in seeing it. Now that I've ridden in it, I can see your excitement. What, what people don't understand about rat rods is it really started in the 40s after World War II. Right. There were no cars left, so there, it became two cultures. One was the hot rod culture where they built these nice classic cars where they had some money, and not to say anything. And then there was some guys that came from there that maybe didn't have as much money, and we built whatever we could do, and we would like, you know, take a Ford part, you know, yes. like my car, it's got a Ford Chevy and, and, a, and a Mopar in it, you yeah, know, and it's, it's all three together. It's, it's go fast economics. It's, it's what you can get your hand exactly. on, what you can make work. You know, yeah, this, George, this, this I think home that, engineering. I think that's really what makes this vehicle stand out. After having now heard about it and then riding in it and experiencing this vehicle, this is really a piece of, a piece of art. It is. It, we will introduce you to the up and coming generation of car builders and we'll show you the equivalent of their cars from the past. Basically, in the 1960s, Pontiac stopped racing. They, all General Motors stopped racing, so they didn't have anything to, to basically test their cars out. So John DeLorean in 1963 says, we want to do something, we want to make the car go fast. So what they did was they took a 1964 Tempest, put a 389 in it, made a GTO, and actually in 64 it got its own brand GTO, put these triple carbs on there, and that thing was awesome. I know you know Pontiac Muscle Cars better than anybody that I've ever met. And we've got the Pontiac Muscle Cars of yesteryear, but we've got a Pontiac Muscle Car for today's times. The 900 horsepower one? This 900 horsepower. This young gun is the new breed that we've been talking about and seeing all over the country, but he's got something special. Let's go meet, Let's him. Go meet him. Absolutely. The day I bought it, it got a tune in and intake, and the warranty was void the day I bought the wow. car. It left the dealership. Right. And I. I kind of went crazy since then. Where where did you get this knowledge? My father. Wow, really? Yeah. Uh, wow, nice. he, he's wrecked a lot of cars in his day. Uh, he had a big block Nova, ran 10s, wow. and he didn't really know this modern technology. So when I told him what I had and what I wanted to do, he goes, well, I know the concept, but I don't really know the new stuff. Right. 
So you're gonna teach me and I'm gonna teach you. So he did the cam swap with me, he did the blower swap. He, didn't, he did the engine swap. He showed up at the shop down there, took two days off, and did the engine swap with me at 60 years old with hurt shoulders and a bad back with his son. So it was a lot of fun. Oh, the pickup truck. And there was a 15 to 70 in second gear. Sweet. And that Sweet. wasn't even to the floor. You'll meet car expert and pinup model reporter Gracie Lynn as she interviews owners about their cars. I guess I was thinking be bright, be loud, and be fast. It's amazing. And I, I think I may hit all three. What do you think? I am sure you did, and she is a beautiful girl. So tell us about the engine you chose to put in here. It's a 355 small box Chevy, uh, right. four bolt main, forged crank, forged pistons. Uh, basically, it was a nitrous motor. Got tired of playing with a bottle because bottles are for babies. <laughs> and I'd rather be blown. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. And obviously, you know, everybody loves the classics, but you went with a second generation car. Yes, I did. Why did you choose the second generation car well, first? Well, I've had four of them. Great. Most people go for the 70 and a half, so I've had them. I like the 73 because of the luxury. It's the only year with power windows. Great, great. Tilt wheel, power steering, power brakes, boom and stereo. It's, not, it's a nice car. You can drive it with one finger, or you can grab it with both hands when you, when you floor it. Just driving this car though really puts a smile on my face. Every, every time I crank it up, I hear that blower whine. Right. And I know a burnout is just a tap of a throttle away. That, right. That's what drives me right there. It really does. It, make, it makes me feel like I'm 16 years old again and you know, driving without a license. That's what makes me feel like. We'll bring you stories of famous cars and past owners and the remarkable stories that go with them. But then how'd you actually find out it was Mae West's car? Well, because first I found out that the previous owner uh, to the person I bought it from, I bought it from a Dale Clee, the previous owner from him was Jim Timoney. Mm -hmm. And when I chased up Jim Timoney, it turned out that uh, Jim Timoney was Mae West's manager and consort. Uh, consort. Mm -hmm. May West's the manager in yeah. concert okay. for, for her whole life. Wow. Uh, and uh, so I chased up and found a title in his name. And when I was chasing that up, I realized uh, that there was a connection for it, is what they name it. You buy a car. Yeah. Okay, you get it home. <laughs> I mean, this is the kind of day I want to have where I'm sitting there, I mean, three years just sitting there, and all of a sudden uh, you look at it one day and go, wow, uh, whose name is that? Marilyn Jane West. And uh, you go, hmm, Marilyn Jane West. Why is that so? That's Mae West. I got, got Mae West's car, you know, yeah, I'd be like, yay. And uh, yeah, th that is that Well, it was a surprise to find, it, yeah. especially after, you know, I wasn't going to do this yellow originally. Yeah. I had already bought the uh, colors to do it in platinum in the yeah. middle and black fenders. Yeah, wow. Until I got it stripped down and found that yellow. I want you to stay in. All right, here we go. I'm going to take off before he gets in here. Oh, I guess I'm going to let him get in here. Oh, he said wait. OK. Three speed automatic, four speed? Uh, three speed automatic. Okay, cool. All right. Very nice. That makes a nice cruiser. It does. With the updates that uh, Dale Clee did, it really goes down the road at yeah. 75, 80, okay, yeah. and could tow at 70 if I need to. What's so. the longest trip you've ever been on? Uh, from Minneapolis to uh, Fort Lauderdale. Wow. That was a pretty good run. <laughs> I bet. We had the Airstream behind it. Over here, I saw when I got in, there's a little plate over there. It says something about 100 miles an hour. Well, I'll read it for you. It says, this certifies that this Auburn automobile has been driven at 100.1 miles per hour before shipment. And it's signed by uh, the person that put the car together, it looks like, <laughs> wow. before Auburn delivered it. That is. That was a very, very fast car, yeah. right out of the box. This Auburn Cord Duesenberg uh, company was known for race cars back then. Oh, really? They, the Duesenbergs and Auburns were winning everything that was out there at the time when this car was produced. That's the way they found the market was by winning the races. Yeah. We'll meet the owners who are building cars from scratch and motivate you to build your own kit car. Plus, we will meet celebrities, race car drivers, and more. Join us as we explore the world of. Speed, style, and innovation.